when I turned 28, I quit my job, sold everything, and moved to Hawaii to work on a farm. Just to clarify, I have zero farming experience. I was born in New York City. Aside from picking blueberries once at a U-Pick farm, I don't think I had ever been to a farm. All I needed to do was work 30 hours a week and lodging and food would be provided. Some people call this indentured servitude, but I called it adventured servitude. <laughs> My arrival at the farm was like something out of a Green Acres episode. I showed up with two giant suitcases to discover that my lodging was a literal shack on stilts in the woods. It was solar powered with stapled on screens and a variety of prehistoric insects that easily found their way in. My sleeping quarters were a tiny loft above the kitchen. The first night I laid awake in bed thinking, oh shit, what did I get myself into? while a rat periodically ran across the tin roof every hour or so. The next day, I began to unpack all kinds of ridiculous items from my bags. Cosmetics, skirts, hair dye. I laughed at myself and tried to hide my silly collection of items under the bed. A few days later, I realized my body was buzzing with strange vibrations and my sex drive was booming. <laughs> I nonchalantly mentioned the buzzing to the wife of the farming couple, Melanie. She said, yeah, you're on an active volcano. It's Pele. I just stared back at her. She could already tell I wasn't a farmer, and I wasn't about to admit that the only Pele I knew of was the South American soccer player. <laughs> I wanted to research Pele immediately, but without a car, I'd have to hitchhike to the public library to reach the dial-up internet. Eventually, I connected to the web and found out Pele was the goddess of fire and the creator of the Hawaiian Islands. No wonder I felt like I was constantly vibrating. I was living on top of a giant, churning goddess herself. Strange things started to happen. For example, I found myself at something called a static dance one Sunday morning. This is where you dance in a large group and maintain a sacred space by not talking. People would dance by me and I would smile politely but firmly, trying to convey a I'm happy being alone look with my face. But one particular dancer did catch my eye, a man I silently cataloged as sarong man, because he wore only a short sarong. He had a man bun and a bronze body, and here I was, attracted to a total hippie, dancing silently in a tent. Clearly, Pele was in charge now. <laughs> After the dance, sarong man invited me to the beach. We hiked down, and soon I realized it was actually a nude beach. I undressed and left my mesh undies on for the tiniest sense of security. Meanwhile, Sarong Man dropped his sarong to reveal an amazing body and perfectly proportionate manhood. <laughs> sarong Man dove right in and began to make his way past the large surf. I, however, inched my way into the water with my arms crossed over my chest and got pushed under by the waves. I broke the surface gasping and decided I did not want to die like this. What would my parents think? My body would be found scantily clad, being carried by a man who had recently been wearing a sarong. <laughs> my parents might think, oh, I bet she did stuff like that all the time. I imagined myself in an open casket at the funeral, shooting upright for one last chance to set the record straight. <laughs> With renewed determination, I got my footing, swam past the break, and found Sarong Man floating in the water. It seemed like I had entered a sacred place on the island. This could be what I was looking for. After five years of weekly therapy, 
I thought I had figured out my perfect next step, a tropical paradise with a free, non-traditional life. We exited the water and Sarang Man invited me back to his place, which was a glorified yurt. We walked into the bedroom and it was set up with candles, a large circular bed in the middle, and a massage table. The room looked like a tantric love fest was about to begin. Sarang Man plopped down, completely relaxed. I sat a safe distance away. He says he's 14 years older than me and technically married. <laughs> he asked for an open marriage with his wife. She said no, so he moved to Hawaii and became a massage therapist. <laughs> then Sarong Man's hands inched up around my thighs. He asked if it's okay to do some pelvic release work. <laughs> he says, a lot of women store tension around their pussy. Oh, okay. I wasn't expecting the P word from him. He seemed more like a guy to say noni or vulva. He does some massage work, and he's right. I feel release. Sarong man says, this can make sex last longer. Right, I respond, but I'm not going to sleep with you. He nods and says, I agree. After all, I just met you today. Although, you can share the bed with me tonight. I'm not sure exactly what I want, but after he rolls onto his side of the bed, I feel my body get heavy from a day of dancing and swimming in the sun. Sarong Man doesn't touch me all night. Most of the night, I lie there awake studying the items in the room. It's a tropical vacation paradise. If I was anyone else, I'd be having multiple orgasms right now. But instead, I'm pondering existential issues. I think about Sarong Man at 42, living in this tent structure, still married, eking out a living and seducing younger women. Instead of it feeling like a free, non-traditional life, it just felt, well, like an escape. At 6 a.m., I got up to go to the bathroom. The sun was rising, and I got into, uh, back into bed. Sarong man pulls me close. He stretches me around my, his body, massages me, and finally ends by licking my armpits. The armpit thing is weird. <laughs> but overall, it's the gentlest touch I've ever encountered. Towards the end of a particularly compromising stretch, I noticed that Sarong Man was, in fact, not wearing a sarong at all. As I sat up in bed, I spotted the shelf above the headboard. There's body butter, massage oil, a female condom, and lube. I smile and nervously read each item aloud as he lies there. Wow, I say, you've got it all right here for easy access. His response is, I could see us becoming lovers in the future. <laughs> Everything got quiet for a few minutes. And then I know that I'll never see Sarong Man again. <clears throat> I don't want to be living in a yurt in 10 years, hooking up with strangers and attending weekly ecstatic dance. Sure, it's a tropical paradise, but it's also limbo, a vortex of time that can make you feel like you're living while you are cocooned away in the little corner of an island on the most isolated landmass in the world. It's hard for me to express what those months on the farm taught me until I found a quote a few years back. It's by the author Martha Beck, and it says, we forget that to give us more than we currently have, life must make us more than we currently are. And that the first act of every creative change is the destruction of the existing order. 
Pele, the goddess of fire, is both destroyer and creator. The destruction part I had accomplished. I left a life that no longer fit me in search of something new. The creation part, though, was still in process. Pele had been my teacher, like the ghost of Christmas future. She shifted my energy and gave me a preview of life in Hawaii through Sarong Man. I was getting the hint that my makeup, mediocre swimming skills, and ideas about sex didn't belong here. A few months later, I would pack up all my stuff and leave the island behind, giving Pele a little yoga head bow from the plane, thanking her as her volcanoes and vibrations slowly melted into the blue. Ginger Nocera, ladies and gentlemen, Ginger.